Hi everybody, this is Peter Green. We're live streaming to you here live from San Diego where we are just about to start day two of our certified Scrum product owner class. I'm here with my friend John. John, say hello. Hello. Uh, and in the background here, I'm gonna pan around. You can see folks coming into the class. Wave hello, everybody. <laughs> and uh, today we are live streaming on the topic of Scrum events. John, what's your favorite Scrum event of all these Scrum events? My favorite Scrum event is Brent Plant Backlog Refinement. Actually. Backlog Refinement. Backlog Refinement. Now, John, as you know, that's not an official Scrum event. It's true. It's an activity. It's an activity. Yeah. Uh, what do you like about Backlog Refinement? I love because that's our that's our time to really um, you know, respond to change. Uh huh. You know, that's I think that's the balance Scrum provides is hey, you need to focus and deliver something, but we still want to be able to embrace change even late in the development cycle. And backlog refinement is a time where we bring stakeholders and say, hey, yeah, we can change. Yeah. What, what are your needs? Uh, let's see. My favorite, probably Sprint Retrospective. Mm. For a similar yeah. reason, actually, because Sprint Retrospective is all about inspecting how things went in the last sprint yeah. and then adapting based on that. So I'd say Sprint Retrospective is yeah. probably my favorite Scrum event. Yeah, and I think both of those events are really about transformation. It's about change. Uh -huh. One's of the product and one is of the team. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, uh, you have a few questions that people have asked in, uh, you want to? Yeah, so our first question of the day <laughs> comes from Ann Arbor. Actually, I have no idea where it came from, but <laughs> <laughs> it's what type of sprint metrics do you feel should be shared with leadership? Ah, metrics. So there's this agile principle that says working software is the primary measure of progress, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think in a small organization, that is actually, a, that's, that's fine. Like the metrics are go to the sprint review and see how things are going. Yeah. It's actually go and see it. Go and see, right? Yeah. A concept from Lean. Mm -hmm. um, and go and see works. I think if you're in a very, very large organization, yeah. then that, that gets a little bit more difficult. Yeah. You used to work at Adobe. Uh -huh. So I'm just curious, how, how, how did that work? Right. I mean, you couldn't have the CEO come into every sprint review of... I did invite the CEO yeah. to the sprint review, but he never came. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, what I used to do is at the end of each sprint as a scrum master, I would create a little report and it would, uh, number one, it would have a link to a, re a video recording of the sprint review. Mm. Uh, and so if people after the fact wanted to at least go watch it, yeah. then they could go watch the sprint review. Then it had some information about here are, here are the features that were completed in the sprint. Mm. Uh, a little bit about you know features that sometimes if we committed to a feature and get, did not get done, I would add a little bit of information about that, and uh, then some, some velocity information. So you made it more. It sounds like even in a place like Adobe that was very big, it wasn't just publishing reports. Right. You were actually almost having a conversation. Yeah, I was with trying to. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So those are the main things. Is you know, um, I actually would publish some other things as well in that report. Uh, like uh, here's our velocity. Uh, you know, we were still at the time largely doing you know multi sprint releases. Yeah. Uh, and so I would I would have some information about you know if, if we originally forecast these features to be in the release, mm. did anything change based on this sprint? Either we've added some or we've removed some. Yeah. So what's the change uh, from what we originally uh, expected to do? And I actually would publish uh, some brief notes about the retrospective as well. Uh, if the team was okay with it, mm. then I would say, you know, at the retrospective, we talked about these things, and here are the improvements we're going to try and make in the next sprint. So you made it very transparent. Yeah, yeah, that the was our goal. process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think some of my favorite metrics for leadership, so here's the thing I get often with coaching and, and training is, um, one thing I say, I, what I don't share are things like sprint burn down charts that they're using that, uh -huh. as I feel that invites micromanagement. Even mm -hmm. if people don't want to micromanage, it's just, it's like a moth to a flame. Yeah. They say, oh, well, what's going on? So there's certain things that don't, but we often, uh, I think often Agile gets this bad rap of being anti-management or anti-leadership. And leadership has a strong role in agility. Mm -hmm. And I think they do need to have some information to be able to inspect and adapt and change the strategy and the portfolio work. So I find even things that you're doing right here in um, the Certified Scrum Product Owner course here in San Diego, uh, there's some great tools that come straight from this class that leadership needs to have. Like, what's our roadmap? Mm -hmm. How's our roadmap changed based on our last sprint? Um, what's our release plan? How's that going to impact marketing? How's that going to impact support? So you have some basic tools that we most basic Scrum teams use, like road mapping and release planning, which I think are are some of the best reporting tools. And there's yeah. some great metrics there mm -hmm. 
you know, that you can embed within that to tell the story and not just the number. Yeah, I, I, I like that. So it's, it's not necessarily just about the number, it's about telling the story. Yeah. And, and like John mentioned, we're, uh, yesterday afternoon we talked about a bunch of what we call glue tactics. How do you glue big strategic things down to product backlog items and mm. have some visibility mm. into what do things look like right now? And that's really what those are all about, is telling the story of where we are today. So let's see, let's, let's go, um, let's try this, John. Let's go one meeting at a time, one event at a time. One event at a time. And we'll get uh, our top tips for each event. Sure. Right, so let's say that we've got a team that's new to Scrum and they're, they're uh, ready to do their first sprint planning meeting. All right, so if you were coaching <laughs> a brand new team, yeah. what's, what's your advice to that team? Well, my first advice would be, don't do the sprint planning meeting first, do backlog refinement first. Yeah, great. <laughs> that's, so, um, but let's stick with sprint planning uh -huh. because that's kind of what's usually first taught. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I always take uh, one thing. One thing I love about working with Peter, by the way, is he's very principle based and value based. And I think we can do something called I think Ron Jeffries calls it dark scrum, <laughs> but you can do bad scrum. Yeah. And I think bad scrum is when it's divorced from the agile values and principles and the scrum values, where yeah. we're just doing the mechanics and. We're doing the same old thing, just in a different way with Scrum. Uh -huh. So, you know, I think my biggest advice to Scrum teams is, you know, really looking at, are you, how are you making that sprint planning transparent so you can inspect and adapt better? Those are my three questions. What are you making transparent? What are you inspecting? And what are you going to adapt based on that sprint planning? Mm -hmm. And then also like to look at the values and principles, you know, like individuals and interactions. So sprint planning to me is a great place for individuals and interactions to have conversations about working software. What working software do we want to get closer to delivering yeah. within that sprint? I think um, my tip for this meeting is to uh, use the sprint planning meeting to create a hypothesis. Mm. So I like to think of each sprint as a product experiment mm. and a process experiment. Yeah. So what's our hypothesis this sprint? Really the hypothesis is, you know, if we build these things, uh, we'll have this outcome for our users. Yeah. Um, and how would we know at the sprint review meeting Right. If we were right or not. Yeah. So that's where we kind of, you know, if anyone's familiar with uh, Stephen Covey, which I think almost everyone's familiar with, that's beginning with the end of mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, what are we really trying to achieve? How do we know we made an impact? Mm -hmm. And what's our hypothesis? Right. And uh, this the sprint planning meeting, one of the outcomes or the outputs of the sprint planning meeting should be the sprint goal. Right. We mm -hmm. agree on a sprint goal. <clears throat> Here's our high level business goal for this sprint. What are some uh, What are some examples of sprint goals? I get this mm -hmm. question a lot. Yeah. And. Um, what are some examples you've seen where it's been an effective sprint goal that a team would create? Right. Uh, well, I can give you, I, I still remember actually the first few sprint goals from the very first Scrum project I ever worked on. So it was a 1.0 one audio product, a 1.0 audio product, brand new. And in the first sprint, we were, we were struggling with this a little bit because we don't have anything yet. So what's the first thing you build? How do you have a sprint goal? And uh, after, after much discussion in the sprint planning meeting, we, we agreed that the sprint goal was gonna be open and playback an audio file on Mac and Windows. <laughs> so that was our sprint goal. Now there was a tremendous amount of kind of underpinnings and infrastructure work and just getting machines set up, yeah. you know, and, and uh, all that, that kind of thing uh, that went underneath that. So there were a lot of other backlog items mm -hmm. underneath it, but it was open and playback an audio file. And uh, at that sprint review, uh, at the end of that sprint, you could launch an application, a giant playback button would appear when you open a file, and you could click the giant playback button and audio would come out. And everybody was like, woohoo, you can play back audio now. So it was exciting. And it actually changed what our plan was. The sprint review for that very first minimal version of that product changed things. Originally then we were gonna say, you know, now add other transport controls like fast forward, rewind, yeah. pause, those kind of things. But when we, when we heard the audio coming out, but we couldn't see the audio, we couldn't see a counter, mm. we were like, we need to see something. Yeah. And so we changed in our next sprint planning meeting for sprint two, we changed it to be the sprint goal is now display a waveform and let the, the timer go across it. So how, how is the sprint goal different than just a backlog item or a yeah. user story that you bring in? Why couldn't I just have, hey, open audio or yeah. as a backlog item? Uh, I think that, the backlog items, when they're well refined, mm -hmm. are very small. Mm. Uh, and you know, I think a good example of this is you know, if we start getting into later sprints, we might have a, uh, a sprint goal for this audio product of add some simple processing effects, right? 
that's our goal. The business outcome is now you can apply effects. That's the thing we would tell our users uh, about. I see. There might be other backlog items, product backlog items yeah. besides that. There might be a product backlog item to clean this thing up over here that we did in a previous sprint or add this other thing. But the overarching goal is what's So the, that goal is more the, the coherence of it. Like in, in the end, it's like, it's like here's really what we're driving towards and kind of the force yeah. or the, on the land at least maybe. Yeah. Uh, because the backlog items can get very much into the leaves and the branches of the tree. Right. Mm. All right, so let's uh, move on to, I don't know, we'll, you, you're supposed to keep oh, watching yeah, this, I right, am. John? I am. All right. Um, I have ADD, I think so. <laughs> So uh, while John's looking at that, we'll look at uh, tips and tricks, unless you've got one there. I have, I have nothing. Okay, tips and tricks for the daily scrum meeting. So daily scrum. Daily scrum. So it's, it's one of my, uh, it's one of my least favorite scrum huh. events, actually. Funny. It's, it's funny. Uh -huh. um, but you know, I think it's, it's very purposeful. If you use it very pur purposely, um, if, you, if you get the teams engaged, it can be very valuable. Mm -hmm. um, I find there's so much contention about why should we even do a daily scrum, mm. and I think sometimes we just misuse it yeah. at times. But anyway, so tips and tricks. One of the things I did at um, it all depends on your team culture. Yeah. You have to match that pretty well. But you know, you can make things you know fun or a little bit more interesting in a daily scrum. Uh, for example, I would play uh, Bob Marley's "Get Up, Stand Up" <laughs> about two minutes right before a daily yeah. stand up, just so I, you know, as a scrum master or a coach. I don't want to be nagging people, right. but I want a nice gentle nudge that says, hey, it's time for a stand-up. So you can make uh -huh. it a little bit more fun and vibrant. Nice. Um, it's interesting. I used to send out this survey um, when I was at Adobe, kind of the, the state of Scrum survey at Adobe. And I had two parts of it. One of, one of kind of one half of the survey was, do you like Scrum? Is it working well for you? Mm. The other half of it, I was trying to, I was trying to get a feeling for, do people actually do Scrum on this team? <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Sometimes right. we adopt Scrum, we use some of the words, but yeah. we're not really doing it, right? right. And uh, when I, when I would get, I had quite a bit of feedback, or quite a, quite a lot of responses to that over the years. And when I went back and did some, some analysis of the data, there was one Scrum practice that was most highly correlated to we like Scrum. And the question on the we actually do scrum side of that survey that correlated with we really like scrum is the daily scrum is an effective use of our time. Hmm. If people voted that really high, hmm. then they were always highly correlated with, yeah, we love scrum, we'd recommend it to all our friends, I would quit if we stopped doing it. And uh, as I worked with teams, wow. like dozens and hundreds of teams over the years, what I found is that when people are complaining about the daily scrum and feel like it's not yeah. a good use of our time, they're not an actual team. Yeah. They're not a cross-functional yeah. team. Yep. They never help each other out because I have my work, you have your work. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, here's here's a tip. If you if you're hearing, yeah, the daily scrum, ah, it's kind of a waste of our time. I, to me, that's a that's like a signal that maybe we should look at our team structure. Yeah, I totally agree. It's like it's, it's the canary in the coal mine. Yeah. Uh -huh. Daily scrum because you got to think that's the most intense moment about interactions. Is that what am I doing? If it becomes, um, hey, I don't really need a daily scrum because. Uh, I'm just doing my own thing, yeah. and I'll just give you an update during the sprint review. Yeah, it's a good it's a good litmus test to say um, what other scrum practices or ag pieces of agility um, aren't we doing? Right, right. So it's a it's a good lagging in a leading indicator, I guess, lagging indicator too. Yeah, a little bit of both. Yeah, I think so. All right, let's move into uh, sprint review. So uh, when we talked about the daily scrum, or not the daily scrum, at the sprint planning meeting, I said that I, I want teams to craft a hypothesis hmm. in the sprint planning meeting. Right. So for me, the sprint review is a validation or an invalidation. So you of better our make damn sure you got your hypothesis right. <laughs> damn exactly it. right. <laughs> so I think of this as a time to validate whatever we did in that sprint. And uh, in the product owner class, I draw this little poster where we talk about feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. kind of the speed of which we can get feedback, mm -hmm. how short your feedback loops. Yeah. And we talk about a traditional project, one of the challenges in a traditional project is you don't get real feedback from users on the product you're building, mm -hmm. often until you ship it. Right. So it's a really long feedback loop. So I draw this really long loop on a poster. And I'll say, and now Scrum, what, how does Scrum work, right? Well, Scrum should have really short feedback loops. Um, but I, I draw them with dotted lines and I say, because raise your hand if you have actual customers at your sprint reviews. Mm -hmm. And in some classes, a few people raise their hand. In some classes, nobody raises their hand. Yeah. I say, well, there's a huge opportunity that Scrum provides us that we're not taking advantage of right. 
this is our chance to close the loop with customers yeah. and users of the product. Yeah. Often it's used as a, maybe it's just baggage from kind of the old traditional style. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, like a change advisory board meeting. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, and almost I think a bad sprint review looks like that. Yeah. It's like, hey, did you actually do it? Did you meet acceptance criteria? Definition of done. Those things are important. But yeah. Check, 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 and then we're done. But we don't actually validate if we made an impact, if we actually are getting closer, or if we actually added value. Yeah. Our good friend Jeff Patton uh, has this great talk he does on outputs versus outcomes. Mm. And a lot of sprint reviews are just saying, did we create the output we said we would create? Yeah. Um, does the product owner accept it? Mm -hmm. did, we, did we build what we say we were gonna build? Rather than, did we get the outcome we wanted? Yeah. And that's really hard to do without customers there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and then it becomes more politics and just a bunch of other hypotheses mm -hmm. about validation that's never validated. Right. Um, so how do you how do you handle Peter? Yeah. How, how do you handle um, actually something I want to and maybe it's a different live stream topic. <laughs> I will right, go on a tangent. Right. Um, is the, the idea of commitment? So Scrum has yeah. this value of commitment. Right. And I often see this in teams where even in sprint planning, this is what you committed to, and sprint reviews ensure did you commit it or did you actually meet your commitment or right. not? Right. Right. Uh, what would you say to those? Uh, I. I found this definition, I was reading a book called Conscious Business mm. by an author named Fred Kaufman, and, and Kaufman's a really interesting guy, it's a fantastic book. Uh, I actually misspoke, I didn't read it, I listened to it, I listened mm. to the audio book, and it's Fred, it sounds like it's Fred just talking to you. I wouldn't have guessed he was actually reading text from a book, mm. right? Uh, but in the book... He gets 99 cents for every download, by the way. That's right, yeah, yeah, click here, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so Kaufman's book, uh, he, he has a whole section on commitment, and he said a, a, a real commitment has three plus one characteristics. So the first characteristic is, uh, of a real commitment is that there's sincere intent by the person making mm. the commitment. I really mean to do it. I'm not just, you know, nobody's twisting my arm. Yeah. I'm not just saying yes, so you leave me alone, right? And in a scrum context, uh, I'm the one that pulled the work into the sprint. We are as a team. We mm. pulled the work in. Nobody said, here's your assignment for this sprint, right? Right. So it's sincere. I sincerely intend to do it. Yeah. Okay? Mm. The next one is... So intention. Yeah, intent is the first characteristic. Sincere intent is the way sincere he said it. Sincere intent. Yeah. The next characteristic he says are, uh, is the skills and the tools. Mm. Do I have the skills and the tools to do what I said I committed to right. do? Right. And then the third one is uh, the time. Do I have the time? Yeah. Right. If I so, have those three characteristics, the sincere, yeah. sincere intent, the skills and the tools, and the time, then I can make a sincere commitment. Right. But he said the plus one part is, we know that things change in the world. Mm. I make a commitment, and then tomorrow something happens. Yeah. We respond to change. And so we yeah. respond to change. And he said, so the fourth characteristic of a real commitment is a commitment to follow up as soon as the commitment's at risk. Mm. So like, whoever made the commitment. So daily scrum, yeah. it's a perfect time to do that. Could be a daily scrum. If the follow-up is with the product owner, mm. then it might not be the daily scrum, right. since they're not often at the sure. daily scrum. Right. But it would be, boy, John, we started working on this thing. Yeah. It turns out this is a lot harder than we thought it was. Let's go talk to the product owner right, right. now. Yeah. Right? And see what we should do about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and what I liked, uh, you know, what you said about we have the skills and, and the resources tools. Yeah. and tools mm -hmm. to, to do it. And I, I think one of the things that you can do in sprint planning or in backlog refinement is we don't actually know if we have the skills and the tools. Yeah. So let's do a spike, uh -huh. or let's do some research, and that can come into it to, yeah. to help you better with your commitments. Right. So, so that's why I look at it, and then at the sprint review meeting, then it's not just, did you meet your commitment, mm -hmm. right? Because if there was any question about that, we should have had the conversation much earlier. Yeah. Of whether we can honor this commitment or not. Right, yeah. That's when we should have talked about it. And that's where that loops into, this is where, you know, it's interesting how we're talking about the sprint events and mm -hmm. activities, yeah. backlog refinements and activity, not an event. Right. Um, but how they're all interrelated. Yeah. You know, yeah, I can see how, well, for us to get a better sense of commitment, we need to do backlog refinement. Yeah. A very disciplined approach to backlog refinement. So we, we do get a better idea of what skills and tools are needed. Uh -huh. Do we have them? If not, how do we actually get them right. in order to achieve that value? Right. And sprint planning all the way to sprint review. Good. All right, so let's, uh, let's spend a few minutes on the sprint retrospective. Your favorite one. My favorite, right. Um, so the retrospective, uh, here, here's my my concern with retrospectives. I hear this very often. Oh yeah, well, well we're gonna do a standard retrospective where we talk about plus minus delta. Yeah. As if that's, that's what a retrospective is, yeah. is that format. Uh, and so I think my first advice on doing, uh, conducting a sprint retrospective is don't make it the same every time. Mm -hmm. 
if you get if you use the same format every time, you're going to get the same category of change ideas yeah. every time. So we should be using different formats to run the retrospective uh, pretty regularly, right? Yeah. If you find something that you love and it's it's almost like if you were mining for gold and you hit a little vein using this format, then hmm. you know mine that vein a little bit, but you're gonna right. it's gonna run out eventually, right. and you're gonna need to look around for yeah. different types of constraints to address yeah. or issues, right? right. So that would be my first advice on the retrospective. Yeah. There's a great, great, great set of resources out there. Right? Yeah. You can look at all kinds of different yeah. places. My, my favorite one is, uh, I'll, I'll get the planningforretrospectives.com. It's, um, uh -huh. I don't know the exact URL, yeah. but if you, it's Finding Marbles is the kind of the bigger domain that's related with, but mm -hmm. it's a retromatic. Mm -hmm. So they'll go and use Esther Derby's and Daniel Larson's framework for yeah. retrospectives, and it'll all generate a retrospective for you. Nice. And yeah. it has all these different cards, and. And all these things where you could pretty much just say show up and you're an expert retrospective master. Yeah, nice. Showing up nice. at the at the retro. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see the plus negative delta at first, and usually it's an okay place to start. Yep. I think, you know, it's about building confidence as a scrum master and as a team. You don't want to overwhelm them and maybe try something totally out of your wheelhouse. Right. But as you get better, you realize that plus negative delta um, has a very sh limited shelf life. Uh huh. To be yeah. able to, to be able to get you going, so right. yeah, there's lots of different tools. My favorite retrospective, uh, more and more I've, I've done them, is just have a conversation. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I would love to say here's a certain framework. I think those are all important to do. Right. Uh, I know Richard Lords loves the ORD framework from Focus Conversations. Yep, yeah, ORD. So there's lots of lots of great ones, but some of my favorite ones have been working with a team and they go to a pub or a wine bar afterwards yeah. or a coffee shop. Or whatever it is, it says, "Hey, let's let's talk about what's happening." Nice. I find those are the richest ones. Uh huh. Nice. Um, yeah. So some of the some of the places that people should look if they wanted to learn more about retrospectives, um, there there's the book that you mentioned. Uh, so this is probably the most uh, most cited book on this. Yeah. Is uh, Agile Retrospectives Making Good Teams Great, which is by Daniel Larson and Esther Derby. Um, another place that I would look is uh, the the book Innovation Games was yeah. written about uh, really about customer discovery mm -hmm. and product discovery, but it has a, a great set of uh, kind of activities facilitated yeah. what we call now forums right games with a business outcome series games, uh, and uh, Luke Homan, the author of that has a, a website mm. called Contenio.co yeah. uh, that has a whole bunch of ways to do retrospectives. If not everybody's in person, mm -hmm. which is a big issue with a lot of teams. Yeah, right? continue, and they have great resources for everything from sprint planning to yeah. backlog refinement, especially for distributed teams or right. distributed stakeholders. Yeah, uh, another one would be TastyCupcakes.com. Yeah, another set mm -hmm. of you know here's a whole bunch of cool ideas for how to yeah. run. You can spend many you can spend many hours on Tasty Cupcakes. <laughs> right, get lost in that. Yeah, uh, you met you mentioned Retromat. Um, and and honestly, uh, if if you just go to, uh, and do a Google search on Hey, uh, retrospective formats or retrospective activities, you're gonna find dozens and dozens of sites out there. Yeah. Have fun with it, yeah. I think it's a playground. I think retrospectives are a playground. It's a time to really hone your coaching skills and your facilitation skills. And it's a time where you can really um, embrace failure a little bit yeah. and play with it. Right. It's a really safe place to try a bunch of new things and that will often impact things like sprint planning and sprint review and daily scrums as well. That right. come out of that. Nice. All right, so that's that's the four events, uh, and and we threw in an activity in there as well, just for yeah. good measure. So, uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, if you have questions after the live stream, go ahead and comment on the video, and we'll respond to those after the fact. Thanks, awesome. everybody. Yeah, thank you.